By all accounts, the sets of Game of Thrones seem like mighty fun and interesting places to be, mainly because dragons and white walkers aren't real, and swords and armor are pretty cool. Still, some of the shenanigans and troubles on set are almost equal to the trials and tribulations of Westeros. Here's a look at some of the bizarre things that happened on the set of Game of Thrones. They destroyed a natural wonder. Malta was chosen for one of the shooting locations during the first season. But during the filming of the Dothraki wedding scene at the Dwayra Heritage Park, relations soured between the showrunners and Malta's government. When the production crew poured sand on protected, fossil-rich rock beds without any protective membrane, the sand seeped into the land and cemented, burying local flora and fauna, and causing what an independent inquiry called damage to irreplaceable fossil and ichnofossil features. A local production company was fined 36,500 euros for the damage, and the series left Malta soon thereafter. According to some sources, the Maltese government banned the show from continuing to film in the country. However, some Maltese blame the debacle on the lack of oversight from the Malta Environmental and Planning Authority, and have even called for the authorities' bureaucrats to be beheaded and have their heads displayed on pikes to entice HBO to return. Way to get into character, Malta! Skinning Real Stags In case you haven't noticed, Game of Thrones is big into symbolism. So considering the fate of the Baratheon family, whose house symbol is a stag, it's no wonder the show wound up using a lot of dead deer. For instance, the dead stag the Starks find in the pilot episode? That was a real stag that had been shot and butchered a couple days before the scene was filmed. By the time they were ready to film, the corpse was quite ripe, and the actors struggled to keep from vomiting throughout the takes. Later in the series, Tywin Lannister was introduced in a scene where he was skinning a stag. Actor Charles Dance had one day to learn how to skin it. He told the Daily Beast, This butcher arrived with a dead animal, and they gave me a little room to work in, gave me a sharp knife, and showed me how to skin it and spill the guts into a bucket. The next day, they gave me another dead animal, and we shot it. It was a bloody good time, but it took me two days to get the smell off my hands. Ad-libbing in Dothraki when creating the made-up language Dothraki for the series, the showrunners turned to creative linguist David J. Peterson. That's great for making your language as realistic as possible, but sometimes he's just not around, so the actors may make up stuff off the top of their heads, and then Peterson has to retroactively make it fit. In one of the early scenes portraying the Dothraki, Jason Momoa's Cal Drogo watched two horny Dothraki braves fight to the death. Producers told him to ad-lib a line, so Momoa used a refrain from the Mari Haka war dance. Peterson liked the sound of the line so much, he ended up adding it into the Dothraki language as test your metal. Not bad, but the improvisational dictionary didn't stop there. Ian Glenn got into the action as well, when the producers forced him to ad-lib a Dothraki line at the last minute. The producers realized they needed his character, Jorah Mormont, to holler take all the golden jewels in Dothraki so they could put that up on screen as a subtitle. Glenn just made up some nonsense sounds that went a little something like this. Fortunately, Peterson, being the pro-linguist that he is, later managed to translate that bunch of gobbledygook into the loose valuables are for loading. That's some awkward phrasing, but it almost makes sense considering Jorah speaks Dothraki as a second language. Hurricane Katya vs. The Knights of Summer Scenes of Renly's camp in Season 2 were meant to be sunny and upbeat, a reflection of the ethos of the Knights of Summer who see war as a game. Problem was, Hurricane Katja struck in the middle of filming, leading to some unscripted and scary moments. According to Finn Jones, who played Loras Tyrell, literally the whole extras tent, which was about a thousand extras and all their costumes, took off into the air. It was actually terrifying with things swinging down and people getting knocked out. It was absolute chaos. So that was a real disaster, but luckily everyone was okay in the end. Well, not quite everyone. Five extras were taken to the hospital for treatment, and that's not even counting the smoke baby. Perverted Executives Game of Thrones has often been criticized for sex position, where dry, dialogue-heavy scenes get livened up with casual nudity. Saturday Night Live even did a sketch contending the footage must have been added by a 13-year-old boy. But according to director Neil Marshall, that joke wasn't so far from the truth. In an interview with the Empire podcast, Marshall described one of the executive producers pushing him to go full frontal as often as possible just for kicks. This particular ex exec like, took me one side and said, look, I represent the pervert side of the audience, okay? <laughs> and I'm saying I want full frontal nudity in this scene. Adam Freeberg approves. Seriously, naked people everywhere. So, yeah. There's a lot of nudity on the show, but there's even more on the set, where actors often end up lounging around in the buff between scenes. Actor Pedro Pascal, who played Oberyn Martell, revealed that one actress stayed naked between takes of an orgy sequence and passed the time playing words with friends with show creator David Benioff. 
while Charles Dance struggled to stay focused on his newspaper. And Charles has the paper, and, and she's trying to talk with him, and he's like... <laughs> <laughs> and he looks up at me, and he's like... <laughs> That seems to be just par for the course, according to Jamie Lannister actor Nikolai Coster Waldau, who told GQ, I've seen Sean Bean naked, I've seen Mark Addy and Lena. We do that at the read-through. We just strip naked and read the script. Adam Friedberg approves. Horse heart. Ever wonder what a horse heart tastes like? Well, one thing it apparently does not taste like is gummy bears. Amelia Clark discovered this the hard way when she had to eat a fake horse heart, which she was assured would taste like the colorful candy. It didn't. Instead, she told Vulture it was sort of a congealed jam kind of thing. On the outtakes, there will be me heaving into a bucket. It's such a reflex. When you taste something that's just so revolting, you kind of instantly just want to get rid of it. It's safe to say that I didn't eat lunch that day. To make things worse, she ended up getting covered from head to toe in sticky fake blood and disappeared from the set for a while because she accidentally got stuck to her toilet seat. Adam Freeberg approves. Yo. Thanks for watching. Click the grunge icon to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Plus, check out all this cool stuff we know you'll love too.